It takes me to do that. Well, anyway, if you have your uh, if you have the Bibles tonight, turn with me again to the book of uh, Esther. Uh, we're looking at the book of Esther on Sunday nights, and uh, I uh, have to admit to you that I've uh, enjoyed the. Uh, once again, preaching. This is uh, in my lifetime. I've preached several times from the book of Esther. And I've certainly always gleaned some great, wonderful things from it. So if you have it tonight, turn me to chapter 9. And I want us to look at the first, uh, all the first 16 verses, I think, for us to get all that in there. Esther chapter 9. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adair, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them, that hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the providence of King Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their, their hurt. And no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. And all the rulers of the providence, and all the lieutenants and the deputies and officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all province. For this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, and slaughter and destruction did what they would unto those that hated them. And in Shushan the palace, Jews slew and destroyed five hundred men. And Parashadath, and Delphon, and Aspathe, and Portathe, and Adaliah, and Aridathiah, and Parmista, and Arisai, and Aradai, and Vajayatha. Now let me just stop. I haven't said a word. <laughs> well, you know, when, that, when that's done, when the Jews celebrate the Feast of uh, Purim, they say all of that, all those ten names in one breath. Now I can understand why. But can't you? You said it all in one breath real fast, no one would understand what you're saying. The ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamathrida, the enemy of the Jews slew they, but on the spoil laid not their hand. And on that day, and the number of those that were slain in Shushan the palace was brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the palace and ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's province? Now, what is thy petition, and it shall be granted thee, or what is thy request, and it shall be done? Then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done, and the the decree, the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day, also the month of Adair, and slew three hundred men at Shushan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. But the other Jews that were in the king's providence gathered themselves together, and stood with their wives, and had rest from the enemies, and slew of their foes seventy and five thousand, but they lay not their hands to the prey. They didn't take any of the spoil. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time that we can come. We can look at your wonderful, precious word and glean from it some things that will help us to live our lives in a way that would bring honor and glory to you. When we read this, I know there are some people who would say, why would God permit his people to slay other people? But when you read this and understand it, you realize that they are the ones that were out to kill the Jews. So they were simply protecting themselves. So Heavenly Father, help us to live for you, to serve you, to be obedient unto you, to do the things that you would have us to do, Lord God, because we know that you keep your promise. And this is exactly what happens here. You kept your promise to Esther, you kept your promise to Mordecai, and because of that, now this decree that the wicked man Haman had brought upon the people is over and done. We thank you, Lord God, because you are faithful. You're faithful to those of your people, and we thank you that you'll take care of us, you'll watch over us, you'll guide and direct us if we will only let you. Forgive us again, Father, where we failed you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God certainly does keep his promise. Jeremiah said, Seek ye the peace of the city, for I have caused you to be carried away captive. And for the most part, by the way, this is what the Jews did. They didn't try to stir up trouble. For all the places they were in captivity, they just simply obeyed the laws of the land and went all about their business. It wasn't the Jews, by the way, that declared war upon the Gentiles. You remember the Gentiles that declared war upon the Jews. And the day had finally arrived. A day he had appointed, uh, Haman had appointed his decree to kill all the Jews. But Mordecai's decree now had changed it from destruction to deliverance. They would be set free now. The Jews had permission to resist their enemy. And they had nine months to prepare to get ready for this. And when that day came, they were ready and they were prepared. And I would say to you tonight, my dear friends, we know that things are going to happen, things are going to take place. We need to be prepared and we need to be ready for what might come. Several things here we look at tonight. First of all, there was a fear of the Jews. You know, the Jewish men, by the way, they were organized. They were ready to meet their enemy. Or those who would attack them. They got their families together. They did whatever they could do to protect their families. But the Lord was involved in this, and he'd give them a greater weapon than their swords. He put the fear of the Jews upon the people around them. Now, this is a fear. By the way, this is a fear that God sent into the hearts of Gentiles to keep them from finding his people. God can put his fear into the hearts of people. You remember Jacob? Jacob was traveling from Shechem to uh, Bethel. And they joined, uh, as they journeyed, the terror of the Lord fell upon the cities around about them. And none of those cities attacked them. Why? Because the fear of the Lord fell upon them. It was the same fear, by the way, of Israel as they entered into the promised land. You know, the day... Uh, he said, this day, I will put my fear on you, and you shall tremble and be in anguish because of it. The people around the bottom would be in fear. They would tremble. They'd be in anguish because the fear of the Lord had come upon them. You probably remember Rahab. You remember Rahab told the Jewish spies that the fear of the Israelites it actually was the fear of God. The fear of the Israelites had paralyzed the nations of Canaan, and they could absolutely do nothing. 
We need to understand it. And we know this. God can still put his fear upon nations and upon individuals. You know, we talk, we, we tremble sometimes because some nation gets a, a atomic bomb or something of that nature. I want to say this to you tonight, my dear friends, that God is mightier than any bomb that will ever be developed. Amen. And he can put the fear upon people as he did back in those days. One of the problems of the world today, though, is this. There's no fear of the Lord. You know, like Pharaoh. You remember what Pharaoh said? Well, who is the Lord? Well, I should be afraid of him. <laughs> you know, who is the Lord that I should obey him? You hear that people say that today. Who is the Lord? The question is, has the world seen anything in God's people that caused them to fear God? Has God seen anything in, the, in people today that caused them to, to fear God? You know what? Uh, is there such devotion to God from among his people that an outsider attending the church or one of the services would fall on their face and worship God? No, there's no fear. There's no fear of God. Christians are not afraid. They're not afraid of God. They seem to think they can do whatever they want to and go where they want to and act the way they want to and God will simply smile and say, you're my children. Have no fear. But my dear friends, let me tell you this. Yeah, the fear of God protects those who love him and, and those who keep his, his promises. Some people say, well, you can't, you can't scare people. You know, you, you, you can't preach and, and scare people. I wish some people could hear some of those old-time preachers that I heard when I was young. Why, I'm telling you, you know, they, they would preach of hell. They'd talk about the fires of hell, how it burned. You'd almost smell the flesh burning. Some people would say, well, now that just scares people. Supposed to be. One of the old time preachers said, if it scares them out of hell, I'm going to keep right on doing it. Amen. And that's what we need. We need to show the fear of God to people wherever we go. Sometimes Christians act so, you know, like, you know, we have no power, we can't do nothing. Oh, I'm not going to say anything to my neighbor because, you know, I'm going to get in trouble if I do. They probably throw me in jail and all these kind of things. People need to fear God. They need to know who He is. And they need to fear Him. Now the second thing you notice here, there was the fear of Mordecai. Mordecai, you remember Mordecai? Haman, when he was prime minister, he'd come by and Mordecai wouldn't even stand up. Well, I just really got to Haman. <laughs> he couldn't take it. That little Jew wouldn't stand up when he passed by. But now, now, Mordecai is the prime minister. Mordecai is the second in command. And the princes and deputies and governors and officers and all that were in such awe of Mordecai, they even helped. Now, this is interesting, isn't it? They even helped the Jews defend themselves. <laughs> First of all, they're out to kill all the Jews, but now, now they're helping the Jews defend themselves. Ah, uh, you know, God gave Mordecai this high position. And, and Mordecai's great reputation. And this man used his authority not to do what he wanted to do. Notice he used his authority to do the will of God. You're in a place of authority. Listen to it. Use your authority to do the will of God. Don't use your authority to knock someone or uh, promote yourself or do any of those things. Whatever you do, use your authority. 
to do the will of God. You know what? If Christians today so love their faith that the power of God would be seen in their lives, the enemy would think twice before ever attacking us in any way whatsoever. The godless world would be afraid of the church. But the church, listen now, the church, the church has become so much like the world that you can't tell the difference. And it's sad, isn't it? It's a sad day. There used to be a day, there used to be a day when the church waged war upon the world. Rage war against sin, all kinds of sin. Abortion, homosexuality, adultery, gambling, alcohol. Huh. By the way, of many Christians, many Christians drink, you know, today and say, well, it's not going to hurt anybody. Or one better than that, they'll say, the Bible doesn't say you shouldn't drink. I haven't read the whole word, have you? It doesn't say you shouldn't drink. It has a lot to say about drunkards. And if you never take the first drink, you'll never become a drunkard. Amen. Just that simple. You know, many people claim to, to be Christians today. The godless world has no fear of us. Huh. You know, I had an experience last night. It really was a strange thing. I almost wound up in prison. I went to this place. I was going to check this man out who called me to, to do that. And uh, I checked him out, and we were starting out of the building, and, well, that was it. <laughs> I told I told this nurse, I said, you know, I'm the pastor of Friendship Baptist Church over there, and this man is a member of our church. That meant about as much as Sam Seacom or something. She didn't even bat her eyes. She said, I don't know you from that. The world out there is not afraid of the church. Several years ago in the city of Dallas, Dallas, the great metropolitan city of Dallas, they, they would not serve liquor by drink, by drink, you know. You know why? Because the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, and the old fiery preacher that they had there at that time, W. A. Criswell, mm -hmm. he said, "As long as I'm in this pulpit here, that's not going to happen in the city of Dallas." And it didn't until he got so old that he couldn't preach, he couldn't say, he couldn't do anything. Else. Now Dallas, like all the other big cities, alcohol flows. 24 hours a day, primarily, you know. It, it, it's absolutely sad, isn't it? You know what? Here in the city of Tampa, now I know you don't see it here. We are in, we are in beautiful Sun City Center. And nothing ever happens here that would upset anybody. You ought to go over and, and drive through Tampa sometime. I mean the city of town. You know what? There's more porno shops than they are McDonald's. Huh? huh? Do you know, I don't know where you know this or not, but there's a man here in the city of Tampa by the name of Joe Redner. You probably have heard of him somewhere along the way. He's more respected. He's more respected and most of the pastors in the city of town. <clears throat> yeah, you don't know who he is. You, you do whatever you do. Google him or something. <laughs> <laughs> you don't find out who he is. You know what?
what? How many of you know who Rhonda Starnes is? <laughs> Rhonda Starnes, when she was county commissioner. By the way, Rhonda Starnes helped us a lot here when we got this property and everything. She got she, that sign out there. She was county commissioner. And she tried to pass a law to outlaw these adult clubs. She wanted to outlaw them. She said, why do we permit them to be here? Let's outlaw them. You know what? She could not get a second. No one would second. It's sad, sad, sad. You know, a thing. We need to put on the whole armor of God and march out against Satan. I don't know what, you know, I, I, I've said this many times before, but uh, I don't know how many churches, don't know how many churches there are in Hillsborough County. I'm, I'm thinking several thousand different kinds, you know, Baptist churches, Methodist churches. Let's just say that the half of the people in them churches are Christian, real Christian. They've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They've been saved by the blood of the crucified Son of God. If half of those people would just get up and say, no more, no more. It's not going to happen in our town. We're going to run Satan out. We're going to run Joe Redner out. We're going to run all these people out. Well, someone has said, you know, you know what? You, you, uh, churches talk about doing a lot, but they don't do much. I've wondered if you just went down here, well, went down here somewhere and said, now, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're calling all Christians. Come all Christians and get together. And we're going to march on sin and Satan and all of, all these sinful things that are going on in our county. How many people do you think would show up? Probably nobody. And you know what would probably happen? He probably said, that pastor from that Friendship Baptist Church up there, he's lost his head. He's, he's went off his rocker. And then everybody would stand around and say, I can't understand how these, how a handful of people can get up and, and get their way about everything. Huh. We've lost our power. You know. Now during this time, here it is. During a two-day battle, the Jews killed 800 of their enemy in, in the capital city of Shushan. And uh, these were the flowers, by the way, for the most part, of wicked Haman. And since the Jews were not the aggressors, it means that his ten sons, the ten sons of Haman, had taken up arms against the Jews. And their bodies, by the way, were hanging upon the gallows. I think they were hanging there for, their, for everybody to see, you know, to take a look at. Uh, as I said to you before, and when at the Feast of Purim, which commemorates this time, you know, that happened, when this happened, uh, the ten names of the sons of Haman are all said in one breath. That's interesting to get. Why? Because they all died together. That's why. Not because of, they couldn't pronounce them like I did. Now, in verses 12 and 13, it's not evidence here of the vindictive spirit of, on the part of Esther. What, what Esther wanted was to make sure that none of Haman's supporters could get together, reform, plan, and cause more trouble. Uh, it's important to note here, too, that the record states the Jews did not take one bit of spoil, nothing. Didn't take none of it for themselves. They could have, and there would have been nothing wrong, but they didn't do it. They were not, you see, here it is. They were not out for wealth. They just wanted to protect themselves. They wanted to live safely 
in the empire. You know what? That's what the Jews want today. They want to live safely in this world. But you know what? Times have not changed by time. Seems to me that everybody else in the world now wants to get them. Really? Huh? Some of you are saying, oh, we have to get over the United States and ever take them. Wouldn't we? I don't know. I don't know. But I tell you this. It costs. And we must pray. We must pray. We must pray for our own freedom because we do not know what is going to take place and what's going to happen. And this is just another lesson. I feel that God is still in control. He's in control of everything that goes on in this universe. I do believe this, that he wants his people, he wants his people to stand up and take a stand against certain things. I don't know why we won't do it. I don't. We've got, yeah, I told you before about when I was growing up, these, these preachers, they'd preach on hell. Why, you could smell the, 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 the fire burning. Now, when's the last time you heard a good sermon on hell? That's when I preached it last year. <laughs> I hope you were here last year. <laughs> but you see, and people want to hear that. They want to hear some good, you know, soft messages. God <coughs> loves you. He, he loves you. Go ahead and sin. And, uh, he'll still love you. All that. Listen to that. God is looking for some people like Esther who will stand up and say, I'm the God. You can kill me or whatever you want to. But here I stand. And I'm standing here for my people. I want to do what God would have me do. I want to be the kind of an individual that God would have me to be. If I go to jail, so be it. If, I, if whatever happens, so be it. I want to be God's servant doing what God has called me to do. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your wonderful, precious word. I pray, Lord God, tonight, if there's an individual here who does not know Jesus as their personal Savior, that something I've said tonight here, the Holy Spirit speaking to them, would cause them to give their heart to Jesus and begin to walk with him, live for him, serve him. Most of us here tonight, though, we are Christians. And we know, we know that if we are obedient unto you, if we do that which you have called us to do, that we can really make a dent in our community, the place where we live, wherever it might be. But sometimes I think, Christians have become so much like the world that when they try to do something, others will just laugh and say, ah, oh, there is no difference between them and the rest of the world. Oh, God, I pray, I pray that I'll make a difference. I'll make a difference in my community. I'll make a difference wherever I go. The people won't say that I'm like the rest of the world. People will say, that man is a Christian, and he lives the Christian life. Father, tonight, I just pray your will be done in this service. For we pray, we ask these things in Jesus' name, and for his sake, amen.